Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Glory career mode. This is episode number 32 and we start today's episode off with a scouting update here. As you can see, Torben Fisher has another batch of players here from China and we put a couple of players in the academy here, uh, some which might have 80 to 90 potential, but right now we're still yet to pick up an amazing player from China, but uh, eventually we'll find someone pretty decent from that region. And also we're going to the first game of today's episode here as we take on Wolfsburg in the big Deutsche Pokal Cup semi-final at the Millentor Stadion. We come on the back of our very disappointing and controversial defeat to Bayer Leverkusen by two goals to one here in Hamburg just a few days ago. That ended our very good run of form and now we're looking to bounce back in midweek and book our place in our first ever Cup final. We will be resting a lot of our players. There are still some starters out there such as Bailo, Moses and Schicharetti as well. And I'm still feeling pretty confident getting through to the final and giving ourselves a really good chance of our first piece of major silverware in the series so far and our second competitive trophy in two seasons. Come on some Pauli, let's have a famous night here at the Millen Tour. It's Christian Trash of Wolfsburg down this right hand side, finds Marley, lovely touch there to beat Dudziak, cross the back stick and Kalaitza had to hoof it behind for a corner, already Wolfsburg's third in just 16 minutes worth of action. Paul Georges and Tep will take this one and the French winger swings one in, Kalaitza does enough. And uh, we're living dangerously at the moment. Wolfsburg has started off well. We're yet to really get started at all, which is a little bit fearful and a little bit worrying as Chicharetti turns one and one of the rare starters tonight from our game against Leverkusen finds Dudziak storming down the left, back towards the Italian, who could be through here, should be first to the ball. He is, it's Chicharetti. Great save by the Belgian Castells, and then the follow-up shot's blocked. Well, not blocked, but scuffed. And uh, it's dealt with temporarily and now fully by Ricardo Rodriguez. Great chance there and Castells made a really important save. Here's Marley on the turn for Wolfsburg. Maybe a chance here with Maximilian Arnold sent down the right hand side. And he's trying to turn the Brazilian Pedro Enrique inside to Christian Trash. Now Marley back on the ball. Pedro Enrique is there. This has been such a scrappy game. So, so poor. But maybe a chance here as Aziz Buhadouz could be released here. But the first touch is poor. Bruma gets it back. And that sort of sums the game up. Oh, Dortmund must be watching this game and licking their lips, thinking whoever we face in the final, we are going to have our names on the trophy before kickoff, because this has been embarrassing. Neither team has played well. It's been so poor. It's, oh, I mean, that sums the game up so far. I mean, Thomas Tuchel is probably in the stands right now laughing. Like, this is absolutely terrible. Neither team can do anything. This is awful. Marley for Wolfsburg shut down, but keeps hold of the ball. We are approaching full time in a very poor game. Very tedious one here at the Millen Tour. It'll be nice to keep a clean sheet, but um, let's be honest here, that's, that's not my intention going into any game. So, yeah, this is this has not been a classic. But Wolfsburg can still win the game late on and send themselves through to the final. Jermaine with the extra pass finds Bruma, who skies the shot into the stands. Well, no exaggeration, guys. That is genuinely one of the worst games of FIFA I've played in a very long time. Nil-nil, and we've got 30 more minutes to come. I don't know what, what highlights I'll show you, but uh, yeah, that was, that was terrible. And hopefully extra time, things will pick up. Well, I'm very hopeful we're going to see some chances in these final 30 minutes because right now penalties is written all over this game and that's that's not what I want because, like, I'm sure we can do it. We, we won the penalty shootout in the preseason tournament, but... I, uh, I I never feel confident taking penalties in this year's FIFA due to the changes in a set piece system. I just I I don't feel optimistic whatsoever, and I'm also awful at saving penalties. But anyway, here's Miechi send uh, storming down the right hand side. Robin comes across. Miechi has pace and energy, takes it round him. Miechi continues his run and taken down, and that's surely a penalty, and it is. We may not have got a spot against Leverkusen in the last game, but we've got our reward this time. Five minutes past the break, and it's a certain penalty, and this. This time, the referee had no alternative and certainly couldn't give a free kick. Miechi storms inside, and yeah, that's that's definitely a penalty. No contact with the ball, all contact with our Japanese wide midfielder. So we've got a chance now, just five minutes after the extra time period has begun, to take the lead and go in front. And Aziz Buhadouz, who doesn't start many games now, is going to take it. And goal, oh, he's put it into the top corner. He's put it into the top corner. And we've taken the lead. And finally, the deadlock has been broken. Good old reliable Aziz Buhadouz won't be here much longer. But he has scored a very important goal that could send us into the cup final. 
Very confident penalty right into the top corner. Castells goes the right way, but pick that one out. Absolutely brilliant strike by the Moroccan. 1 0 St. Pauli. We finally have that breakthrough. I think we deserve it. Only just though. And we have a big, big advantage now. Throw to St. Pauli with 15 minutes away from a place in the final. Here's Kala on the ball. Tried to turn Mali. Lost it. Tried to win it back. Couldn't. And uh, he's now lost it completely. Now Oscano tries luck from range. Castells makes the save. Buhadus flicks it in. And uh, we can't get another shot on goal. As we still lead by one. And we are a quarter of an hour away from a place in the Deutsche Pokal final in just our second season. Let's not let this slip now. Well, we have the big advantage, but the game is not done yet. Wolfsburg continuing to attack and looking for that equalising goal. Here's Maximilian Arnold down this right-hand side, trying to turn Kala here. Uh, Kala still trying to get the ball, can't do so. Now Jermaine on the ball, tries to turn Enrique inside towards Bruma. Back to Jermaine, who hits the post, and Dudziak should get it clear. Wolfsburg are not done yet. They've had a very poor game, but they're still only trading by one, and there's no reason why they can't get back into this one. Come on, let's not let it slip. Is Didavai through towards Mali. Mali inside. What a chance. Here's Jermaine. Goes for goal. Oh, Justin Bailo. No. Wolfsburg have equalised with virtually the final kick of the game. And Justin Bailo has had an absolute shocker. Oh, I don't believe it. Didavai played it through. And Jermaine went through to strike. And oh, Justin Bailo. Close your legs, mate. Nuts. Right through the centre. Oh my word, Justin, I gave him the nod ahead of Svila, who started in the last round. I thought, I trust my number one. He wants a new contract. He's not going to get it playing like that. What a howler. And it's no real surprise. And it's no real surprise. The referee blew for full time directly from kickoff. Final score 1-1. The game was terrible for the first 90 minutes. Extra time there. There was a lot of drama. And in the end, we thought we'd won it for a Buhadus penalty after Miaichi was felled in the area. But Jermaine, with basically the final kick of the game, has sent it to penalties. And I have to say now, I'm, I'm feeling extremely nervous. Who's going to win the lottery? So here we go then, penalty shootout, and Aziz Buhadus, who scored one in extra time, has the responsibility of taking the first. I normally go to the same corner if I've scored one before in the game, so I'll do the same, and it's worked once again. Aziz Buhadus, penalty king. Mali is going to take Wolfsburg's first against Justin Bilo. Can he make a man straight away? Yes, he can! Justin Bilo coming up clutch! Kalaita now, the centre-back will take our second one, going to the opposite corner, and oh, I've hit the post! Jermaine, who scored that equalising goal with the final kick of the game, takes the second and sends Bailo the wrong way. Ozcan to take our third, once again going to the left, hopefully this time won't hit the post, and oh, I didn't, but Castells made the save! Which means Wolfsburg can take the lead in the shootout for the first time, Didavai takes it, stutters, and sends it down the middle. And now we're in trouble. Dudziak needs to score this. Got to go to that top left and this time get one to fall. And I've done so. But this does mean... Oh, no, it's not his penalty. <laughs> Still, it's a big penalty. Arnold could put Wolfsburg back in front. It's a very long run-up, I must say, for Maximilian Arnold. Where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? Straight down the middle. So this is it then. This is it. The final penalty for us. And we have to score it. Otherwise... We have lost, and Christopher Butchman, captain for the night, will take it. It's Butchman who sends Castells the wrong way. But it will mean nothing unless Justin Bilo can fully redeem himself and save this penalty from Christian Trash. Come on, Justin. Come on, Justin. Come on, Justin. Oh, what a miss. What a miss from Trash. And now Miyaichi can give us the lead in sudden death, which he's not done. It's in a bar. Guilavogui will take this penalty and can send Wolfsburg to the final. Guilavogui has put it wide. This is unbelievable. No one wants to win. Tylo Kera, the centre-back, can he convert? Yes, he can. Sends Castells the wrong way. And now that means that Wolfsburg must score this penalty in what has been a crazy finale. Seguin will take it. They've missed their last two. Seguin needs to score. And Bilo saves it with his leg and turns it onto the roof of the net. Justin Bilo has come up clutch in the shootout. He may not have saved Jermaine Shaw, which went in with the final kick of extra time. But he saved his best for last. The heroics in the shootout. What a save with his leg to turn it onto the roof of the net and it's all over we are in to the Deutsche Pokal final come on well that was unbelievable a terrible 90 minutes the 30 minutes of extra time were thrilling and then in the end it goes to a shootout 
where Justin Byler, who made the error for Wolfsburg's goal, ended up redeeming himself. I think we deserve to win, this, uh, the, win the tie anyway. We were the better team over 120 minutes. And, uh, oh my goodness, I... <laughs> I didn't want to do it on penalties, my heart was racing like crazy, especially when Wolfsburg had two attempts that could have sent them through to the final. They missed them both, we got a little bit lucky, and in the end, Justin Bilo provided us with some heroics as well. Crazy game, and we're into the final, come on! And it's a very difficult man to match to give this one, because the game was quite poor for a long time. But I'll give it to Marley, he had 31 passes in the entire game, didn't misplace a single one, and got the assist for Jermaine's late equaliser. He was, uh... He was very hard to dispossess. So it wasn't exactly a textbook win, things didn't exactly go according to plan, but it was a win and we are through to the Deutsche Pokal final to take on Borussia Dortmund. What a crazy penalty shootout as well, Wolfsburg choking twice in attempts to go through to the final and then Justin Bilo coming up clutch, saving that spot kick and winning us the shootout. It really was an interesting game though, nothing happened in the first hour and a half, then everything happened directly after that. A really weird game but we're through to the final and that is absolutely fantastic. We'll take on Borussia Dortmund and that'll be the final game of the season and a question for you guys as well do you want me to do that game as a live highlights game like my normal live games or a live Q&A where you'll see the full game and I'll answer some questions and uh, answer them in the background for you as well. So there's the question for you guys live highlights or live Q&A how do you want me to present the Deutsche Pokal final let me know by voting in the top right of the screen as always. Still for the second of three games today here we would return to league duties in the Bundesliga taking on Frankfurt away from home, trying to make it back-to-back -back wins on the back of our last league game, which was a defeat to Bayer Leverkusen. And we took the lead just 11 minutes in as well. Moses Odger playing a 1-2 with Keikuta Mane. And our wide midfielder right now continuing to keep his place in the first 11, despite Victor Andrade now fit to play, rifles the ball in and shows why he's still been getting a nod. He's been playing really well since our Brazilian went injured, and that's why he's still in the starting lineup right now. So his third goal of the season, and we will take the lead early in this game. We really were putting the pressure on early in this one too. Our last league game being that defeat to Bayer, we needed to respond and get a big three points here and keep ourselves in sixth place and in that Europa League spot. All the chances in the first half were falling to St. Pauli. We were still leading by one but had a great chance to make it two here in the 26th minute. David Villa, our player of the season, played through and as I went for the audacious chip over the goalkeeper here from a tight angle, I thought it was going to nestle into the far corner but sadly instead it nestled onto the roof of the net and went behind for a goal kick. What a lovely goal that would have been to put us two goals up going into the break, but sadly it was still 1-0. So at half time we were still leading, we had the slender advantage, but as I always say, I never really feel confident when I'm only leading by one. I always feel a little bit nervous, a little bit worried that eventually my opponents will get back on level terms, and from directly, uh, directly from kickoff in the second half, that's exactly what would happen. Alexander Meyer got on the end of a cross from the left-hand side and headed it in to equalise for the host. But what I was asking the question was what happened to my back three? As I always say, if you've got a back three and there's a free header in the centre for someone, someone's not doing their job. Simple as that. They should not be getting a free header. We've got three centre backs on the pitch and in the area. Meyer was all alone at the back stick there. A breakdown in communication. And unfortunately, Frankfurt capitalised and made it 1-1. But already from kickoff, we surrendered possession and Frankfurt came forward once again here, attacking in numbers. Alexander Meyer found Stendera. They played a 1-2. And what a terrible start to the second half because just four minutes after the restart, Frank Fire scored a quick, Frank first scored a quick fire double and turned the game on its head and that man Meyer got both of the goals to make it 2-1 and, and maybe for the first goal I could blame some poor AI marking in the center but the second goal there was only one person that could take the blame and that was me. I surrendered possession directly from kickoff then I was scrambling then I was panicking and as you could see Frankfurt capitalized turned the game on its head and I said I wasn't feel confident going into the break only leading by one. Well, already now we were trading by one just four minutes after the restart. We tried to respond in the second half. First, our captain heading that uh, cross from uh, Neudecker wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. But then the 65th minute here is a man crossed the point to the centre. We would find that equalising goal. And the guy that got it, Rodolfo Hara, who came off the bench, El Toro, heading in the cross into the top corner, making it 2 2 and putting us back on level terms. And you may have noticed as well the little celebration from El Toro. That's what I 
hope will be the first of many trademark celebrations as you guys voted in the last episode that the Spanish Archer, the Torres celebration, should be his trademark. So a big thank you to over 3,000 of you for voting for El Toro's trademark celebration. There's the first of hopefully many as he heads us back on level terms after he came off the bench for Justin Cliver and scored a big, big goal for his fourth of the season in the league. So Hara comes off the bench and he rescues a point for us because that was how the game would finish. 2-2 to final score away in Frankfurt and it's, it's not a great result. This game should have been a win for us really. Frankfurt currently sitting in mid-table right now. We're going in pursuit of a European place to end the season but really I'm, I'm just glad we got a point. Simple as that. I'm glad it's not back-to-back -back defeat. Once again we can see two goals. Our defence was leaking once more and again El Toro rescuing us a point. It's better than nothing right. So 2-2 to final score and um, again you saw our problem all season long and what will be all series long as well. I will point it out from time to time but it is true we we're not expected to defend and keep clean sheets it's not doesn't powerly way but it, it is a little bit worrying when the first goal was a breakdown in marking and a free head on the back stick and then the second goal came directly from kickoff when I gave it away but anyway we'll take the point and uh, it could have been disastrous instead it's just a bad result but uh, as you can see for after the game here we uh, did decide to extend our stay as China's uh, national team manager as well I'm still yet to manage a game with China all we've had so far is international friendlies but I've got a sneaky suspicion that just like with Canada in my Watford career mode last year and uh, Milan career mode as well, I got a sneaky suspicion that I might still be playing the World Cup just like I did with Canada despite not playing any qualifiers or anything like that. I guess, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Touch wood, that is what will happen and we'll be taking part in Russia 2018 come the end of the season but I'm not I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, following that, as you can see as well, we had an academy update here as well. A couple of players in there look like they could be pretty decent. A couple of players have high 80 potential. Some still have a, uh, a max range of low 90 as well but also how about this too directly after the first of the month we could see we had a training injury for Matthias De Litt and our first ever signing of the series your signing back in season one has done his medial collateral ligament and is going to be out for three months now how frustrating is that we've had quite a few injuries this season not really had much luck on the injury front Matthias De Litt with a training injury he's going to miss the rest of the season and also possibly a little bit at the start of the season as well. So we sidelined for our final three games, our final home game, and then the two final games of the Bundesliga as well. And he's out for the cup final as well against Dortmund. What a huge blow. I mean, De Ligt is probably our best centre-back in the team, and now he's going to be out for the remainder of the season, missing that all-important cup final against Borussia Dortmund come the end of the year. That's gutting. I mean, that... That really is gutting because, you know, training injuries for me, I'm, I'm not going to go on a massive run. I, I've said it a couple of times, though. It, they, they annoy me so much. Like, they really, really aggravate me because they only come on the first of the month. And it's just a pot luck whether you're going to get one or not and uh, for how long the injury will be. So, delete out for three months. You'll miss the remainder of the season. And that is such a shame because with three games to go, we need everybody right now. We're in sixth place and clinging on to that final Europa League place with 49 points. Only ahead of Berlin on goal difference. Two points clear of Mönchengladbach, who we face in a penultimate game of the season we're still not able to hunt for a Champions League place but right now I just want to stay in the Europa League place that will do me fine but for the third and final game of today's episode here we play host to 1860 Munich a team that came up with us last season from the Zweite Bundesliga and they right now are rock bottom of the table and need to win their remaining three games to have any chance of staying up so both teams coming into this one need to win if they're to have any chance of fulfilling their destiny for us trying to stay in the Europa League places we've now dropped to seventh place and only a win will put us back into sixth and for 1860 Munich they have to win otherwise they're relegated one side with bags of goals the highest scoring side in the division and the other team with the worst defense so it should be clear cut here but the joy of football is it rarely pans out that way we might get a surprise but, you know, the visitors have certainly got to do better than they have been the last few games away from home. They've been awful. So there wasn't really much else that needed to be said pre-game. Both teams need to win for different reasons. For us, if we fail to win, we stay out of the Europa League places with two games to go and know that teams above us have destiny in their own hands and can prevent us from qualifying for Europe next season. And for 1860 Munich, if they fail to win, they're down. Simple as that. So both teams need to win and a draw will feel like a defeat for both sides. There was nothing to report though in the first half. A really poor opening 45 minutes. A cagey one really as both teams had so much at stake. Then 
second half, we had both of the chances in the first 15 minutes. First, El Toro's firing a shot over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And then just before the hour mark, another great chance here. Chicharelli, uh, Chicharetti rolling it through towards Justin Kluivert. But what a miss there from our Dutch winger as he fired it wide the post. So two sitters there from me as it was still nil-nil. But five minutes after the hour mark here, 1860 had their first chance of the game and they'd score it as well. Hamilton whipping a cross in from the right-hand side and Vitek in the middle, volleying it home and making it St. Pauli nil, 1860 Munich 1 and against all odds, the visitors who need to win their remaining three games to have any chance whatsoever of mathematically avoiding the drop took the lead completely against the run of play, completely taking us all by surprise as they went in front as they were destined, even if they had to go down, to stop us from qualifying for Europe. So St. Pauli nil, 1860 Munich 1 and now we are panicking. This is our final home game of the season. We need to try and respond and get back on level terms at the very least and with 15 minutes to go our final chance fell to Victor Andrade against his former club. Well he's on loan there last season. He scored against us last season for 1860. Had the chance there to smash the ball in, relegate his former team but instead he put it wide and the game finished. St. Pauli nil, 1860 Munich 1 and these stats at full time were damning. We had the same amount of shots as 1860 but not a single one on target. We just weren't clinical and that's why we lose the game and as if things couldn't get even worse after the game we found out that Sobia who picked up an injury in the first half but managed to run it off or so it seems actually broke his toe and he's going to be out for two months so our captain is going to miss our remaining two games of the season where we know now we're three points behind Berlin and Destiny is at our own hands. He's going to miss the cup final as well. So we're missing two of our back three. Our captain and Delit both sidelined for the remainder of the season. We are totally choking as this season comes to its close. We've only picked up one point from a possible nine in our final three games. We're in seventh place and already three points behind Berlin, four points behind Schalke and it looks as though now the Champions League dream has gone and the Europa League dream may have gone as well. There's just one episode remaining in the season before the Deutsche Pokal final that will be coming out tomorrow night so don't miss it it will feature our final two league games against Borussia Mönchengladbach and Augsburg but thank you for watching this episode hope you have enjoyed it if you have then please do leave a like much love to you all and I'll see you for the season finale very soon